So it's a little hard to orient yourself here. We've got this pizza-shaped uh, you know, wedge of tissue, but this is part of a much bigger lesion. I'll show you a radiograph of a characteristic example. There we go. So here is um, an x-ray from the knee, and you can see this mushroom here, this exophytic polyp growing out of the surface of the bone, kind of near the metaphysis um, area, and it kind of bulges out of the bone here. And note that the stalk of the lesion points away from the joint. See, it's growing not straight out, but it's kind of leaning back away from the joint space. And that's a typical um, appearance, what we're seeing here, of uh, osteochondroma. And osteochondromas are these stalk shaped. They're not always as perfectly mushroomed like this. Sometimes they have some weird kind of finger-like shape to them. But radiographically, they're very characteristic. They're a very common uh, bone lesion that's seen in uh, many, uh, many people. And they're often kind of discovered incidentally as solitary lesions. Although some people have a syndrome called multiple hereditary exostoses or MAG, um, that they develop numerous osteochondromas and they have a higher risk of developing secondary chondrosarcoma uh, from the surface of the osteochondroma. Um, and uh, uh, exostosis, by the way, is, a, is an alternative synonym for osteochondroma. So in the long bones, an exostosis and an osteochondroma is the same thing. Um, there have been some genes found to be associated with these, both the sporadic ones and the um, hereditary uh, form of the disease. And these are the EXT1 and EXT2 genes. So EXT, think about that, uh, it's uh, like exostosis. So EXT is the gene uh, to remember here. And they're usually in teens and young adults. Oops. So what we see microscopically is this, there's bone here, and then on the surface you have a cap of cartilage, a hyaline cartilage cap. So here's the cartilage cap, and the thickness of the cap is usually less than one centimeter. It can vary a lot by the age of the patient. That tends to be a little thicker in younger patients as the lesion's growing. And when you look at the cartilage, it does something kind of cool. Look at how it's like clustered into these columns and rows here that go all the way down, and then you can see the cartilage begin to transition into bone. So this is basically the, the tumor recapitulating endochondral ossification, which is the thing that you see in the growth plate of young, skeletally immature individuals. That's, remember, how the long bones grow and how they elongate and extend themselves. So this is basically making endochondral ossification. The cartilage cap is turning into bone down here. And underneath, you have uh, nice uh, trabecular islands of bone. And um, the, um, this, uh, this uh, marrow space here basically is contiguous with the marrow space in the middle of the underlying bone. If we go back to the radiograph, you can see that the cortex of the bone lifts up and comes right out. So the outside of the stalk is contiguous with the cortex of the bone. And that middle of the stalk is contiguous with the medulla of the bone. So it's like someone just pinched a piece of cortex and pulled it up and then it grew out into this mushroom shape. So that's kind of cool. Sometimes the bone is nicely organized under here, but other times it gets a little bit more busy and kind of crazy looking. Again, look at the beautiful columns of um, uh, chondrocytes here and making these nice uh, rows or columns that are um, endochondral ossification. Very beautiful. Um, and then down here though, this one looks a lot more busy because it's got all sorts of stuff here that looks kind of like cartilage, but it's also getting purple and mineralized. This is basically dying or dead chondroid material from the cap that didn't get resorbed. Sometimes you can see this get kind of trapped into the middle of the stalk, and then it begins to get purple and calcify. So you can have this kind of disorganized uh, necrotic chondroid stuff in the middle of the stalk. Don't let that uh, worry you. Okay, um, the radiographs obviously are important in all of bone pathology. I should have mentioned that at the start. Uh, you you know, you got to see the radiographs and know the, the clinical history for all of pathology, but especially bone pathology, it's so crucial to have good radiographic um, uh, imaging and clinical information and putting that together with the microscopic features. So in, um, in some en uh, osteochondromas, you can see this really nice endochondral ossification, or I'm sorry, endo yeah, endochondral pattern of ossification, but in, um, in adults particularly, the cartilage cap can become very thin and eventually it can actually go almost completely away and you just get this mushroom of bone sticking out of the surface um, with, with almost no cartilage left over on top. So it can really run a range from a very nice cartilage cap like this all the way down to a tiny little thin or even absent one.
Um, so it's just good to know that there's a variety of features that you can see there depending on the age of the lesion.